All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the rapidly intensifying Hurricane Ida that is expected to become a Category 3, 4, or even 5, striking the Louisiana coast with devastating impacts. Now, before we get into the video, I would ask that you like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. And also, I would like to mention that a couple of days ago, we uploaded our third winter forecast. The people have been eating that one up. I'm just plugging it every single day to make sure everybody gets to see it that watches the videos. That's going to be on the top right corner of your screen, but we'll reveal what's underneath these question marks in the overall forecast towards the end of that video. But we will also talk about the precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and even snowfall forecast for the upcoming winter in that video. So be sure to check that out. Again, top right corner of your screen. For today's comment of the day, I would like to know, do you think this will end up being the strongest and most impactful hurricane of the season, or do you think the worst is yet to come? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook across the entire Atlantic. And look, things are really picking up. We're nearing the peak, but we still have about two weeks until the peak of the hurricane season. So it's going to need to really slow down soon or else we're going to have a really active season on our hands just because of this really active period we're in. It's August 28th, and look, we have Ida, Hurricane Ida there, entering into the Gulf, rapidly intensifying. I'll show you guys that on the satellite imagery in a little bit. But we also have Tropical Depression 10 that is expected to become a tropical storm. And then we have two tropical disturbances out there that could develop. Uh, some of those have a better than 50% shot, actually. So let's go ahead and take a look at those individually. Uh, first things first, this one offshore of Africa, this new one that we haven't really seen before, has a 40% chance of development. It's underneath the white bar there on the bottom, as you can see, but it is a 40% chance. You can kind of tell, but I don't know why it goes underneath there. This is from the National Hurricane Center, not me, so I don't really make the map, obviously. Here is our second disturbance out there, and this one does have a 60 percent chance of development, but it better hurry if it wants to develop because it is heading towards colder waters and that chance is going to really diminish over time, I'm sure. Uh, and then we have our Tropical Depression 10, and this one is expected to become a tropical storm, as you can see, uh, by tonight and in through uh, the morning tomorrow into the afternoon, uh, and then kind of becoming a tropical depression again, so weakening after that point. But it will add one named storm to our list of named storms so far. Here is our cone forecast for what you're probably actually watching this video for, and that is Hurricane Ida. As you can see, this one is expected to be a major hurricane by 1 a.m. tonight. Uh, that's going to be Sunday, August 29th. Okay, so this one is already going to be a Category 3 uh, within the next, well, within the next 24 hours. And then it's going to have a full 12 hours to develop after that point over warm Gulf water. So obviously this is a concerning look. You know, if you saw it just becoming a major hurricane right before the coast, that would obviously be a more optimistic outlook. But at this point, it is going to have long after it becomes that Category 3. And that's why we're picking up on the possibility for at least Category 4. I would say it's actually about a 50-50 shot if it ends up being a Category 3 or 4 uh, with, well, I guess not 50-50 because there is obviously some percent chance that it stays under or goes above. But uh, it's a good shot that it's somewhere in that 3 to 4 uh, range in, as far as category. And then there's also a semi-decent chance that it does become a Category 5. I would say you know, 20% chance maybe, uh, but it's likely that it ends up peaking at a three or a four at this point. Five cannot be ruled out. Uh, and there is hurricane warnings up for the Louisiana coast, by the way, tropical storm warnings for surrounding coasts. So this is a very impactful storm. And as you can see, it's going to curve back up into Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, and eventually kind of the Northeast where it is going to bring plenty of rainfall, probably not too much windiness, but definitely plenty of rainfall. We're going to talk about all those impacts later on in the video, by the way, as far as total rainfall, storm surge, uh, winds expected. So stay tuned for that, because that's going to be probably the most important part of this video. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that satellite imagery, the low pressure location, some of that model guidance. Um, we're going to start talking right about impacts in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that satellite imagery. And uh, the reason I recorded this to show you guys is because I would usually just take the, the latest frame, but so much has changed uh, over the past, I, I don't know, three or four, I guess just three and a half, three hours, something like that, of this satellite imagery. You see in the beginning, uh, towards the earlier portion of it there, we see that it basically has no eye 
and it doesn't even look like it's beginning to develop an eye. We have one mass of very tall clouds indicated by those uh, blacks and grays and even pinks there, but nothing uh, as far as developing an eye. And then what we kind of see is it recycles. That looks like it's weakening a little bit, but it develops a second area of very tall clouds towards the end there. And we do see what looks to be possibly an eye in between there. This is a hurricane that is probably approaching Category 2 status already uh, at this rate, and it will likely... I could see it being a Category 3 before 1 a.m. tonight, uh, or after, or during, but I think at this pace, it, it is rapidly intensifying, uh, and you can't really try to time it at all because it's just it's just so intense how fast this one is intensifying. The low-pressure location, it has just crossed over Cuba. Like, literally, it has just crossed over Cuba, and it's already developing uh, this rapidly. The good news here is that our is that our spaghetti model guidance is very consistent, so we don't have too much uh, to really speculate about as far as track. Uh, we kind of know, so it's easier to prepare in that case. These models could shift at any point together, uh, but it is more likely than not that they kind of stick together considering how closely knitted they've been for a couple of days. Now, that is very, very good news at least. I hate the uncertain ones because then a lot of people um, don't really know what to expect, and then that's when more dangerous situations end up occurring. Here's that intensity guidance quickly, and as you can see, this is as of about 1 a.m. We were at a mid-level Category 1, but I think really at this at this pace, you know, we could be at a Category 3 by, you know, this evening, uh, really. And now these ones have it peaking at Category 3 and a couple peaking at Category 4. I think that's a little bit optimistic. I definitely think Category 4 or even 5 is possible, uh, and there's a lot of meteorologists that are in agreement with that, you know, in this Gulf. Again, I've always said it, it's like it's like an oven, and these storms are like dough. They just rise uh, in the Gulf. It really just, they they have such an easy time developing in here, uh, and these storms are never to be underestimated. Here's a model guidance simulation of what the future satellite could look like, and you can see this one just uh, really rapidly gains an eye by the time we're reaching about, I would say, mid-morning, and then you know by the time we're taking a look at about 8 p.m., uh, it looks like a very strong hurricane. Once it has that very defined eye, that's around, you know, maybe 8 p.m., 7 p.m. this evening, uh, and it kind of just continues to intensify intensify from that point forward towards tomorrow afternoon. Again, about 1 p.m. is when we're going to be seeing the landfall, and that's when it's probably going to peak uh, and be done developing for the most part, right when it hits the land with the eye. Uh, beforehand, it should have a pretty easy time just maintaining or still intensifying. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and start talking about impacts. Most, most likely, arrival time of tropical storm force winds, storm surge, total rainfall, uh, and then we're going to start talking about wind speeds according to our models, as well as total rainfall according to our models, uh, and gusts according to our models. So all those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, as well as the probability of tropical storm force winds. As you can see, around Sunday at about 8 a.m., we see those tropical storm force winds reach onshore. But the important thing to note is the storm will not be reaching onshore by that point because this is going to likely be a Category 3, 4, or 5 uh, that is going to be hitting Louisiana. So well, well away from the eye, you will still be seeing those tropical storm force winds. Uh, but possibly before there's even clouds over you, you would be feeling tropical storm force winds with this type of storm. So that's why it's so early. I mean, that is probably about five hours before the storm is even reaching onshore, just to give you an example. Uh, so this storm is going to span very wide. And as you can see, if you're in the yellows, you have about a 50-50 shot of seeing those tropical storm force winds. So even as far as Alabama coast and Texas coast, you have about a 50-50 shot of seeing those tropical storm force winds well away from where the eye is expected to go on shore. That's how intense and just widespread these impacts are within this storm. Uh, if you're in the reds or purples, you have about guarantee you have a pretty much guaranteed shot of seeing those tropical storm force winds at least. And then the greens is kind of lower than 50% chance. Speaking about storm surge, as you can see, for some of those coasts on the further end, I encourage you to find your area, by the way, and read. Those black dots kind of separate the areas. So in between the black dots, you will see a numbered uh, kind of value in feet down there. That is your expected storm surge uh, if, if you live in that region, obviously. Uh, two to four feet there on that very um, western coast. I have a very hard time pronouncing a lot of these here in Louisiana. I've struggle with these for years, so I'm just going to kind of indicate each region. Uh, the one next to that, to the right, we have three to five feet. That's kind of smaller region. 
Uh, in that Vermilion Bay, if I'm saying that correctly, has 69 feet expected. The bay's kind of it kind of funnels in, so it's worse oftentimes. 10 to 15 feet there in between Morgan City and uh, mouth of Mississippi River there. 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, guys. That is obviously a very extreme amount. This is why we're talking about these devastating impacts, guys. This is just the beginning, by the way. 7 to 11 feet there as you move uh, kind of more towards, I don't know what you'd call that area, but kind of on that more coast that is facing the east there in Louisiana. Uh, and within the, the bays there, or lakes, I guess they call them, 3 to 5 feet and 4 to 7 feet, respectively. And then 4 to 7 feet there on the Mississippi coast, and then 2 to 4 feet there on the Alabama coast. So obviously storm surge is a huge concern at this point, but not the only one because look at the total rainfall. If you're anywhere in the greens, you're expecting one to four inches of rainfall. That's for both the green shades. Four to six inches of rainfall there in the yellow. Six to ten there in the orange. Obviously, that's extremely widespread, and six to ten is easily enough to cause flooding. But it gets a lot worse than that. Ten to fifteen inches of rainfall there in the reds, and then fifteen to twenty inches of rainfall there in those pink regions there. That includes New Orleans, possibly. So obviously, that is going to cause potentially extreme flooding there with 15 to 20 inches of rainfall combined with the storm surge and combined with the fact that I've heard people tell me in the comments and I've seen it on social media as well that this area in particular has seen a massive amount of rainfall recently over the past month or so or possibly just the past couple of weeks to the point where the ground is already soaked which is going to cause a lot more problems not only for flooding which it definitely will uh, but also those trees the root systems are weakened at this point they're moist and these winds are just going to knock down these trees. There's multiple implications with that, and these are the types of things we need to be paying attention to as this storm approaches. Here's the European model. I took one frame here with just the sustained winds, and yesterday this one was calling for 99 mile per hour sustained winds at its peak. Now it's calling for 125 mile per hour winds there as it reaches the Louisiana coast, which is obviously a very large amount. Let's take a look here at the maximum accumulated wind gusts because I think the wind gusts are more important than the sustained winds because uh, the wind gust tells us what it's going to get up to. Uh, the sustained winds just shows you what's going to be kind of the non-gust winds of the sustained, just constant. Uh, and that's obviously bad, but I think the gust is what really does a lot of the damage here. And as you can see, this is our accumulated maximum wind gust, which means it shows the whole model run, basically, the maximum wind gust at any given point. So a lot of these higher amounts are obviously from this hurricane. Uh, as you can see, in kind of the grays there, the browns, actually, better yet, that are in Mississippi and kind of the surrounding regions, not that inner one, but the outer one, we expect 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts there. Within those whites and reds, that's where we expect 80 to 125 mile per hour wind gusts. Obviously, a very large amount there, but it gets even worse in those grays that do reach the coast of Louisiana because that is where we're expecting 130 and uh, above mile per hour wind gusts. And the maximum here on the bottom right, I can tell you on this model is 163 mile per hour wind gusts. Whew. So 63 mile per hour wind gusts would be a ton. So add 100 miles per hour to that and that's what those wind gusts will be. Uh, that just puts it in perspective. Obviously very concerning outlook there from the European model. Total rainfall as well is not much better uh, if you're anywhere in the yellows to reds, you're expecting 1 to 5 inches of rainfall. Browns is 5 to 10. Uh, blues is going to be 10 to 15. And then those pinks is going to be your 15 to 20 uh, inch of rainfall there. In the maximum here is 19.35, and that is in Louisiana there. So obviously an extreme amount of rainfall as well. Here's the GFS model accumulated maximum wind gust. And this one's a little bit more optimistic. We only get it to 120, which is a whole lot better uh, but this GFS model is kind of lower resolution, so sometimes you can't see the fine details in there. So I question how accurate this is, and also the European model is just kind of better. But that's, you know, between the two of us. Actually, you know what? Everybody kind of knows that. But we take all opinions into a consideration. I've always said that on this channel. We look over all the options so you're never caught off guard, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Whether it's better or worse, it can sometimes be right. The total rainfall is a little bit less too, so this is a little bit more of an optimistic outlook. Like I said, maximum is 15 inches here, whereas on the European it was um, 20. So obviously 5 inches makes a big, big difference in this type of a scenario. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6 still. I feel fairly confident in a lot of these things. We know this is going to be a major hurricane, and that's the most important thing you need to know. These impacts will be devastating pretty much regardless 
of what happens because of how strong this storm will be. So I highly recommend you check out the National Hurricane Center and just be paying attention to all of their outlooks, forecasts, advisories, everything they're telling you guys because that is life-saving information. Let's go ahead and get into the comment of the day. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what category do you expect this storm to get to? And James Marr, who missed the day, I noticed James Marr, that was so sad, I said, unfortunately, I believe Ida will be a category four at least, possibly even a category five at its peak. I would say there's definitely a chance of this one peaking at just a category three, but for the most part, I agree with anything from a category three to five being possible, uh, with it kind of looking worse and worse as the hours go on because of how rapidly it's developing right now. My confidence in it possibly becoming a four or five is going up as we speak. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bennett, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lord of the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fuego, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Balin, and Stephen Grunenthal. If you would like to be a part of this awesome patron end screen today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. But also to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.